welcome and praise the Lord. My name is Sister Judy Gruber, and I bring you love all the way from the nation's capital, 3641 Georgia Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. I want to bring you love from our pastor, Bishop Elijah Solomon, and from the matriarch, Mother Nanny Gruber, and the entire Fisherman of Inn Church family. We are so glad, so glad that you decided to be with us on this Sunday morning. And while we wait for others, we would love for you to participate. Be an evangelist and go ahead and hit share so others can be a part of this morning worship experience. And while we wait just a little bit longer, put your name and where you're from. Again, we are so glad that you decided to be with the Fisherman Men Church family on this Sunday morning. And let's go higher in the Lord. We love you. Praise the Lord, everybody. And everybody, praise the Lord. My name is Elder Jael Russell, and I greet you all in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank and praise God for each and every one of you this morning for tuning in to the Fisherman of Men Church live stream broadcast. And at this time, I'm going to give you an opportunity to put in your prayer request in the chat. And while you're putting your prayer request in the chat, I'm going to give honor to whom honor is due. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's ahead of my life, to the founder of the Fisherman and Men Church, the late Bishop Clarence Groover, to our interim pastor, Bishop Elijah Solomon, to Mother Nettie Groover, to Minister Anderson, to Deacon Peavy, to all the saints of the Fisherman and Men Church, our guests and our visitors this morning. We greet you all in our wonderful name. Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you that are just joining right now, you still have an opportunity to put your prayer request in the chat. And this morning we'll be coming from the 122nd Division of Psalm of David. Again, that's the 122nd Division of Psalm of David. And when you have it, please say amen. All right, I hear some amens. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. All right, I hear some more amens. It reads on this wise. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the priests of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within the walls of prosperity within the palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us touch and agree together this morning as we go before the Lord in prayer. And trust and believe before we start praying that God is going to work it out. I'm believing with you this morning that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is going to work it out. In fact, he's already working out even before we start praying. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made and have given us another opportunity to rejoice and to be glad in it. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, for all the prayer requests that were entered into the chat this morning. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for being a prayer hearing God, a prayer answering God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that you touch those, hallelujah, oh, that desire to be healed this morning from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord, for by your stripes they're healed, Lord. Lord, visit those, hallelujah, that are in the nursing homes this morning. Visit those that are in the hospitals this morning. Visit those that are on a bed of affliction this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, let those that are watching the broadcast feel your healing power right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we're praying, Lord, for deliverance, Lord, upon our friends, our family members in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Set the captives free this morning for who the set, who the son sets free. It's free indeed. Lord, destroy every yoke, break every chain, break every fetter. Hallelujah. This morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Hallelujah. Prick the hearts of our loved ones, our friends, our family members, our co-workers, even the backsliders this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, those that are lost, hallelujah. Those that are not saved, Lord, give them a mind, Lord. Hallelujah. To repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins and fill them, Lord, with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God, give the utterance, Lord. Lord, we're praying, Lord. Hallelujah. For those that are seeking miracles 
miracles this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Oh, Lord, we know that you are a miracle working God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Let your power come upon them, your wonder working power this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perform that miracle, hallelujah. Oh, that we're all believing in this morning, hallelujah, to happen in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open up that door that's closed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Close that door that needs to be shut, hallelujah, this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless those, Lord, hallelujah, oh, that are believing you for a job in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless them with a job in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless those that are seeking for promotion, Lord. Bless them with favor that they need, Lord, on their jobs with their boss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for that promotion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of those, are, some of us are seeking for direction, Lord. Oh, Lord, order our steps, direct our path, speak to them, Lord. Let me hear your voice clearly, exactly what it is that you want them to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, set your peace, Lord, send your peace, which the pastors all understand, Lord, upon those, hallelujah, that need peace, Lord. Comfort those that are mourning this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you are the God of comfort. Remind them, Lord, if they draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. For where the presence of the Lord is, hallelujah, is a fullness of joy. And at your right hands are pleasures. Oh, forevermore. And Lord, we be sure and careful to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In that name that's above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Trust and believe God this morning. He's working it out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. You be blessed in Jesus' name.
Lord, everyone. My name is Sister Ethan Payne, and welcome to Fisherman of Men Church Broadcast, where brotherly love is more than a motto. We are happy that you chose to watch us today, and we hope that you feel welcome and you get something special out of this broadcast. I have some announcements for you. Join us each Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as we stream from our website, www.fishermanofmenchurch.org, or just join us on Facebook and YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on Sundays at 11.30 p.m. at www.myspiritdc.com. Again, at www.myspiritdc.com or just download our Fisherman of Men Church app. Many individuals can continue supporting the ministry by participating in weekly giving. You can mail your giving to us at Fisherman of Men Church, P.O. Box 43333, Washington, D.C. 20010. Again, Fisherman of Men Church, P.O. Box. 43333 Washington, D.C. 20010. Or you can use your cell phone. If you have Cash App, it's the dollar sign FOM 3641. Again, the dollar sign FOM 3641. You can always give on our website at Fisherman Amen Church. Dot or, or text to give at 301-709-7233. Again, text to give at 301-709-7233. We hope that you continue to enjoy the service. Oh, praise the Lord. Magnify his name. Let us have church in Jesus' name. Love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the
blood of Jesus can make you whole today. So I'm say, oh, it is Jesus. Thank I'm so Jesus. glad I know him. Hallelujah, Lord. One day he came into my life. Thank oh, my Jesus. God. Many, many years ago. And I can sit here and I can sing and plead to you. Oh, Thank God, Jesus. just get a touch. You never regret it. Hallelujah. Oh, it is Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank we Jesus. praise his name. And we love him, oh God. Thank you for your goodness. And let us praise him. Get him in your life. It's nothing. And Jesus is what the world needs today. Say amen, amen, and amen.
Praise the Lord again. My name is Sister Judy Groove, and if you just joined us, you're right on time for the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Once again, we say this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is Bishop Dr. Elijah Solomon, amen, pastor of the Great Fisherman of Men Church, the congregation where you will find the love of God demonstrated in the streets, in the stores, in the neighborhoods, on the homes, because this congregation of people love God, they love God's people, and they love the people of this world that need to know who Jesus is. The Fisherman of Men Church is located at 3641 Georgia Avenue in Washington, D.C. We have the city of Washington, D.C. and the surrounding cities of Maryland, amen, at heart. We want you to know that we are a church that has doors that will open on welcome hinges. We have people that are just anxious for the day that we're going to reopen the church. We're going to have a, a bliss, a, a media blitz, letting you know that we are going to open the house of worship once again and that you will be able to join us. We're looking forward to having you come worship with us. You have been so faithful over the years watching on, on social media, joining in on weekday prayer services at 8, 6 a.m. in the morning, Friday evenings in the witness and testimony and inspirational word of God. Please continue to worship with us on Facebook and YouTube and whatever the social media that you have at your disposal. We want you to know that we love you. We have not abandoned you. We have continued to pray for you. And we're looking forward to the day that we can swing those doors open and you come in with rejoicing spirits, shouting shoes, words of inspiration being poured out by the men and by the women of God, witnessing and sharing how God has brought us through the last year or two. I always give reverence and respect to the establishmentarian of this great institution, the Apostle uh, Groover, Clarence Groover, amen, and for his uh, companion, the matriot of today, Mother Nettie Groover. We honor and respect the elders of this house of worship, uh, Elder Russell and Elder Anderson, and also the board of trustees and every member that has been so faithful, committed, and keeping the word of God pouring out of this legacy church, the Fishman of Man Church. This morning, as we lead into the week of Thanksgiving, we want to just talk about harvest time. We want to let you know that Thanksgiving is a time that we need to have fellowship with family members. We need to encourage those that know not God and let them know that we still love them. We are still in a pandemic. Let me say that again. I know we've had vaccines, we've had booster shots, we've worn masks, we've worn gloves, we've sanitized, we've washed hands, we've had social distance, and things are getting better. But we are still in a pandemic. Some states are having an explosion, hospitals are overflowing once again. But I do believe we are covered under the blood. We are covered under the blood, but we also covered with the mind that God has given us to be obedient to those that have the rule and the authority over us, the medical profession, the scientists, amen, and most of all, the word of God instructs us to obey those that have the authority over us. So tonight, today, I want you to just lift your heads with me. Lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your help. For our help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We're going to talk about harvest time because Thanksgiving is a celebration of harvest time from the, the, the ability to, to remain alive in tough times. Winter was terrible. Amen. Lives were being lost. The Indians and the settlers were coming together to celebrate that they have survived. Today we celebrate that we have survived thus far. God has not forsaken us. He's still on the throne. He's still God. So as we get ready to go into the Thanksgiving week, 
four or five days from now, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving. Let's give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let's not thank the turkey. Let's not thank the cooks. Let's not thank the great meals. Amen. All of those things are the way we celebrate Thanksgiving. But most of all, <clears throat> let's give thanks unto God for what he's done for us. Would you pray with us? Lord Jesus, we come boldly to the throne of grace. <clears throat> we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We ask now, Lord, that you continue to put a protective shield round about us. Bless those, Lord, that have been so faithful over the past year and a half. How, Lord, they've remained diligent. they remain committed to the household of worship, especially to this legendary institution, the Fishman of Men Church. I pray that you give us all strength. Protect us, Lord. There will be so much traveling over this holiday week that, Lord, many souls need to be protected and watched over as they journey over the highways and the airways and the streets of our cities and trains and buses. Protect us, Lord. Bring us all back together again that we might worship after this Thanksgiving week is over. I want to read today, if you all would just allow me to just read with you the Word of God. I want to read from the Gospel of Luke. I want to read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, beginning at verse number 1. Here Jesus Christ, he creates 70 evangelists. Why did he do that? Because he knew it was harvest time. He says, after the Lord had appointed these 70, he sent them two by two before the, his face into the city, every city and every place, whether he himself would come. Now look at, pay close attention to the word of God. The Bible says that Jesus said, I'm going to send you out together to witness because I'm coming to those places. He said, therefore, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the, his harvest. He says, go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Here Christ is letting us know that he is going to enter once again. And what he says is this world is ready to receive the salvation from Christ. The harvest is plenty. There are too many lives being lost, too many that are turning away from Christ, too many that have walked away. We want to bring them back. That is the labor. We've planted seeds of faith. We now must harvest them. It's harvest time. We might call it discipleship time. We might call it evangelistic time, but it is time for the people of God to go forth and harvest this crop that God has laid out for us. God has been too good to us to ignore what he is doing for us in this day and time. I'm so glad that he said he's sending us now, not alone. We have evangelists, we have missionaries, we have deacons, we have bishops, elders, preachers, pastors, ministers, ordinary people that love God. He's telling us to go into the world and let them know that the harvest time is right. God is soon to come back. We, we are getting closer to the day that he will return than ever before. It is harvest time. Now, a harvest Festival is a celebration of the food grown in the ground. That's a natural harvest. Harvest festival reminds Christians of all the good things that God gives them. Remember that everything that is planted, it is only because God gives it the nourishment that it needs to grow. This makes them want to share with others. We should want to share with others who are not as fortunate as we are. In schools, in churches, People bring food from home to a harvest festival service. Oh, I remember the day when that's all we would do as people of God would be get together. We would worship the Lord and we would sup together. That's what God is saying. He wants us to continue to bring the harvest festival to life. Throughout the Bible, 
the harvest carries, carries spiritual significance. It's used in parables such as Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 8, as a metaphor for spiritual growth and health. We see that in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. We see it in the book of James, chapter 3, verse number 18. The harvest has always been a beautiful and an important part of life on earth. The time when the year's work bears fruit and the people are fed. Now, when we've been planting seeds of the gospel of Christ, the good news, the day will come that we will see that seed germinate spiritually and souls will be saved. Don't you want to see your loved ones saved? Don't you want to see your spouse? Don't you want to see your children? Don't you want to see your coworkers, your employer, your supervisor, your next door neighbor, all of those, we have to harvest those souls. Uh, it's harvest is symbolic of blessings. It's symbolic of health. It is symbolic of abundance. If we plant seeds of righteousness, we shall ripe, reap righteousness. That's the harvest that we are looking for. It's a feast appropriately called in Exodus chapter 23, verse number 16, it's a feast of harvest. I'm looking for the day that we can feast and see souls just coming forth, being filled with the word, with the will, and with the spirit of God. Uh, Jesus Christ spoke of a spiritual harvest waiting to be reaped. Jesus was looking into the future. He was looking into the 20th and the 21st century, saying, my disciples, my, my tolerance, they must go out and harvest these souls that are ripe to come into the gospel of Christ. Uh, Jesus traveled and he saw crowds and he had compassion on them. Uh, what he was giving us was an example of how we need to have compassion on the field that needs to be reaped, uh, souls that need to be saved. Uh, hey, he said that people were being harassed, the sheep were without shepherds. Uh, then he said to his disciples once again, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He said we need to start praying. Church, we need to pray hard for life for those God to send more laborers into the vineyard. That's why he tells us to train them and teach them. Uh, that's discipleship, not just bringing them in, but developing them to be disciples like God wants us to be. He says once we need to pray earnestly that the Lord will send more laborers uh, into the harvest. Uh, he says that in Matthew 9, 36 through 38, uh, Jesus is referring to the souls uh, needed to be brought to repentance and faith as a harvest is waiting to be realized. Uh, I'm so glad that God knew that he would have a time of harvest, uh, not just comes once a year, but the harvest that we're talking about spiritually is we need to reap souls uh, that God's word has been planted. Uh, it does not matter who planted the seed, what pastor planted it, what missionary planted it, what mother planted it, uh, what father planted it, but the seeds have been planted uh, and we need to reap that harvest. Uh, do you have as Noah said that said, it's still four months. That's what Jesus Christ told the woman at the well. Uh, he told him, his disciples, uh, that the harvest is four months off. Uh, what Jesus is saying uh, from the time that he was on this earth, uh, that he knew that the harvest was coming. Uh, it may be thousands of years, but it's harvest time. Uh, we are living where we must start harvesting souls uh, because the harvest is ripe. Uh, the word of God in John 4 and 35 says, in the days following the statement, many of the Samaritans came believing in Christ. Uh, in in verse number 41, Jesus saw the spiritual harvest of souls uh, awaiting in the village. Let's let Christ see us harvesting, bringing souls to Christ, uh, bringing them out of the muck and mire, bringing them out of the doldrums of sin. Uh, we want the harvest to be reaped because that's what God has commanded us to do. Now, a spiritual harvest is a result of God's work in the hearts of men. 
Let me say that again. A spiritual harvest is the results of God's work in the hearts of men. It, it is clear from the parable of the seed and the sower that some people's heart are good soil uh, and some are thorns and thistles, uh, but there are some good soil out there. Uh, when God sows the person, he's able to touch their hearts. Uh, he's able to bring them uh, to a repentive spirit. Uh, all we have to do is be ready to harvest them, uh, bring them in, teach them, show them that God is the only answer for the problems and the dilemmas and the circumstances we are going through today. However, we can be faithful to sow seeds uh, and help the plants to grow. We're not responsible for making them grow. We have to turn them over to Jesus uh, and God will develop souls. But we must be diligent in planting seeds of faith. We must be diligent in being disciples uh, as we prepare to go into a holiday festival on Thursday of this week. Uh, the process of spiritual growth and maturity comes from regenerated hearts. Uh, the process of having uh, goblins and hams and meatloaf and potatoes comes from farmers uh, taking the time in the process uh, of feeding the cattle, uh, of feeding the turkeys, uh, of work, working the ground. Uh, but now we reap the harvest. Uh, well, that's what we want to do for the people of God. Uh, we want to reap that harvest. Uh, the soul, the Bible indicates that the sower, the tender, and the reaper are likely to be different people at different times. You, you can read that in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9. You can read it in John 4, 35 and 38, the harvest is right. One may plant, another may water, but it's only God gives the increase. What role are we playing today as people of God? Are we planting seeds of faith? Are we watering newborn babes in Christ? Uh, are we following up with those that have a soft heart for God? Uh, just as physical growth in a field the spiritual growth of people is natural. It's a process that's overseen by God. If we don't see anyone getting saved, it can be discouraging. Let me just repeat that. As people of God, sometimes we get discouraged because we have been reap, we've been sowing seeds, we've been witnessing, we've been discipling, and we don't seem to see anybody getting saved. But I told, I can tell you today, be not dismayed. God is still on the throne. Do not be discouraged. Hearts are being touched by God. Remember that sowing or discipleship is just as important as reaping. Sowing and discipleship is just important as harvesting. If we don't sow, we are not going to see souls coming to Christ. That is why we must focus on pleasing the one who has sent us into the field that we can see the harvest coming. Church is harvest time. It's time out for playing. It's time out for bickering. It's time out for animosity. We must Work the works of him that have sent us while the life is warm in our body. Why? Because it's harvest time. God's laborers in the spiritual harvest of souls are promised great rewards for our faith and our perseverance. James chapter 1 verse 12, 2 Timothy 4 and 8, Hebrews chapter 11 lets us know that there's so great a cloud of witness. It lets us know that there are rewards uh, if we would just keep the faith and keep harvesting souls. This, is, uh, uh, this applies to all ex aspects of our spiritual lives, including witnessing, seeing people saved and growing in the Lord, which is the spiritual harvest that we long to see. Sometimes we don't see it. Nevertheless, believers are exhorted with these words, let us grow, let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. A harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace those who go out weeping 
crying, carrying seeds to sow will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. That's what David wrote in Psalms 126 and 6. We just need to sow. Sometimes we must cry. Sometimes we must just stay up and say, Lord, send souls into the vineyard that we might reap them. Uh, we should pray about every aspect of spiritual harvest. Uh, we can ask God to change people's heart. Lord, as we enter into this Thanksgiving week, I know that it's important for us to say we give thanks. We give thanks for the harvest. We give thanks for the seeds that are planted. We give thanks for those that have been faithful. So as we go into the Thanksgiving week, I want you to know it's harvest time. And as we go out harvesting, let us remember more than 10 times in the word of God, as we celebrate a Thanksgiving, a time of harvest, God wants us to know the most important thing we can do is, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 105 says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. I could just go on and read them on and on and on. But the word of the Lord lets us know that we should give thanks to the Lord because it's harvest time. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. God bless you. Please have a safe Thanksgiving week. If you're traveling, be safe. Drive carefully if you're in your car. Take your time. Don't rush. May God bless you and keep you. Again, this is Pastor Solomon from the Fisherman of Men Church. We encourage you to keep planting seeds. It's harvest time. Time is running out. We need to give God, amen, the harvest that he has called us to do. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. What a word we heard this morning. I don't know about you, but I was extremely blessed by the word of God that we heard. And this right here is my favorite part of the service. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's offering time. This right here is a time where you can be a blessing, and we all can receive a blessing at the same time. And there's four ways that you can give uh, to support this ministry. The first one is via cash app, dollar sign, FOM, 3641. The second way to give is fishermanamenchurch.org. You can also give via text 301-709-7233. And you can also give P.O. Box 43333, Washington, D.C., 20010. And we thank and praise God for you uh, in advance, those of you that are going to bless us with your contributions this morning. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made and have given us another opportunity to rejoice and to be glad in it. Lord, I pray right now that you bless both the gift and the giver, Lord Jesus. Even bless those, Lord, that have a desire to give, Lord, that do not have anything to give, that you're blessed with something tangible to give the next time. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you open up the windows of heaven, Lord, and pour us out a blessing, Lord, that we'll not have room in us to receive and rebuke the devourer for our sakes. And Lord, we we'll be sure and careful to give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In that name that's above every name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. Once again, we thank and praise God for all of you, uh, for your contributions this morning. And remember, you are sowing into good ground at the Fisherman and Men Church. Expect your blessing to come sooner rather than later. And for those of you that would love to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, please give the Fisherman and Men Church a call. And we'll be glad to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you that are still seeking the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can also call the, call the church as well. We'll touch and agree and pray with you that the Lord will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gives the utterance. You be blessed in Jesus' name. Welcome again. My name is Sister Ife Payne, and we hope that you enjoy this morning worship with us. We hope that your souls were blessed in Jesus' name. If you desire prayer or just want to be baptized, please call the church at 
202-7216. Again, the number is 202-723-2216. Or you can email us at info at fishermanamenchurch.org. Again, the email address is info at fishermanamenchurch.org. We want you to continue to be blessed by this ministry. So we want you to connect with us through social media. So you can find us on Instagram and Facebook, Fisherman Amen Church. Again, we hope that your souls were blessed by the word of God this morning. And we want you to continue to support us and have a wonderful week.